We are so happy to have you here. So I'm uh, Pauline, I'm French, as you can hear, and um, I'm a software engineer at Agicap. Uh, it's uh, the leading um, uh, software for cash flow management. I don't know why I'm using this. I have two mics now. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm, I'm Andres. Uh, I, I'm from based on Uruguay, so I speak Spanish, she speaks French. We try to make this in English, see how it goes. I'm a product manager at Okta, and I can lead the OpenFGA product in, in the CNCF community. Okay, so let's start. Uh, so, imagine you are a startup uh, building a software like Agicap with uh, an account uh, receivable project. So you, you are dealing with payments. Um, so at the beginning, like every software in the world, basically you have users and entities or company, organization, whatever, and you have members of those entities. And only members can access its resources. It's a simple uh, authorization rules, but uh, at the beginning with a product with not much features, it works like a charm. So uh, we had this uh, model in our database, which is uh, pretty uh, basic. Uh, and every time you want to, to secure uh, an, an API or something, we're just asking the question, is uh, user N a member of uh, the entity uh, ACME? Uh, then, OK, uh, she can access uh, the, the payment. But uh, when you are dealing with uh, sensitive data, like in our case, uh, payments, uh, do you really want all members <laughs> to access uh, payments? Not sure. So what we did uh, in phase two, we, we needed to have like administrators uh, to say, uh, hey, only administrators can access uh, or approve payments, for example. So what we did is just like a naive approach. We introduced a Boolean, is admin, on the table. And now we can say, um, if is a, the, the user an admin, he can approve payments. If he is only a member, he just can see it. So now we have uh, is admin everywhere in our code, <laughs> in our code base. Uh, and it's not really uh, scalable, because we don't have a clear representation of uh, what an admin can do uh, versus a simple user. You don't, you don't really have a, a model, an authorization model uh, with what you can do. You just have a, a hundred of occurrences of is admin in your code base, uh, except if you have a good documentation. But uh, yeah, we know we don't have a good documentation <laughs> in startups, so, so th there it is. And then uh, we needed our customer success and support engineers that we call uh, staff uh, to access um, the, the entity's resources, so to see the payments, for example, because they need to help our customers, right? But they can't uh, be members of entities. So what we did is, again, really a naive approach. Uh, we introduced a role, like in uh, Rose Bell rules-based access control that we called uh, staff, and uh, again, a table linking uh, user and uh, this role. So uh, can you guess the next slide? So now everywhere in our code base, we had hundreds of occurrences of is staff or is admin, and all our authorization rules were pretty basics, like uh, when we want someone to approve payment, we'd say, okay, who can approve payments? Staff or admin, so is staff or is admin can approve payment. So is there a better way? Because basically, what I want to do as a developer is to say, hey, is user N authorized to approve payment? I don't want to ask question about uh, like she is staff, member, or admin. I don't care. I just want to ask a business question with authorization. And that's when we started to look for something better. And we found OpenFGA, and that's why I'm here today with Andres. Thank you, Pauline. So what is OpenFGA? OpenFGA is an authorization system for developers that is based on a concept called relationship-based access control. You can see it as an evolution of role-based access control and attribute-based access control. It's inspired by a research paper that Google published a few years ago where they described how they implemented authorization internally in a way that was flexible enough to support all of their use cases and also scale well enough to Google's needs. 
What we did is we packaged those CDS in a server plus SDKs plus tooling to make it easy for you to integrate it in your applications. So let's try to see if we can uh, help Pauline to achieve what she wanted initially with, with the first, first version of Agica. I'm going to show now, go to my Mission Studio code. OK. And so this is the way I'm going to increase the font here and see if you can see it better. Hopefully, you can read it from the, from the back. Is it fine in the back? Yes? OK. So the way we OpenFGA works on relationship-based access control works is by defining two things. First, what we have here on the left is what we call an authorization model. There, we are going to describe all the types or entities that are relevant when we're making an authorization decision. In the scenario that, that Pauline described, that implied that they had an entity with three roles, administrator, staff members, and a couple of actions that they want to check if the user can perform or not, which was can approve payments and can view payments. Right? And we're saying there that we can assign users to administrators, users to members, and users to staff uh, roles. And then in addition of that, we are going to instantiate that model with data. And the data is in form of what we call relationship tuples that are like this. User, then I put a user type and a user ID. In this case, then I'm saying administrator, entity object type, object ID, right? So in this case, I'm setting this relationship. I'm saying that the user ID is user N, and the entity ID is entity ACME. This user could be users, or it could be applications, or it could be employee. Whatever I want to use as a user a, a type, it is fine, right? In a simple, same app, I could want to authorize multiple principles. Each of them will have a different user. OK, so and the, once I have this, I'm going to try to run OpenFGA and see how, how this works. So I'm going to start the server here locally. I could run it in a Docker container, or in a, we have a Helm chart if you want to deploy the Kubernetes, so the usual things. And then I'm going to open another terminal, and I'm going to just copy the things I have here. The first things I'm going to do is I'm going to use a CLI that FGA has, and I'm going to create a, what we call an FGA store. A store has the model and the data that we're going to use for solving a specific scenario. And, uh, and in, in general, you can have a store for development, staging, and for different applications. OK. So I'm going to run this command. And you see that the store was created. I don't know what's happening. OK. And uh, I'm going to take this uh, store ID and set it in an environment variable. OK. And now what I can do is I can start writing these tuples to the system. I have this command here that is FGA tuple write user and administrator entity admin, the same data I have here. It told me that I wrote it. I can also import all the tuples that I have in that file. So instead of typing them one by one, I will get two that succeeded and one that failed, but it was already there, so that is expected. And then what I can do is I can run this command that is called check. That is the one you're going to run from your APIs. You're going to call use an, 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 an API call to make this call to, you, to the system. In this case, user and can view payments for the ACME entity. Okay? And, and that is the way you end up integrating this in your application. We're going to see more details there. And in addition of using the product this way, we can also define a, a YAML file that has the model plus the tuples plus different tests. For example, user N should be pay, should be payments in the ACME entity or approved payments in the entity search. Should, should only be payments but not approved. Marie should be able to do anything. And if I have that, I can then use a, a tool that is going to run all those tests with my model, but then tell me the old pass. This is a way I have to kind of iterate on my model and test it and make sure it still works as I expect. OK, so and then from your applications, you're going to use an SDK. In this example, is the JavaScript, but we have one for Java, .NET, Golang, and Python for now. You're going to call this method right when you're adding new tables to the system. For example, a user is added to a specific organization. OK, that's good. <laughs> that's a good day today. And, and then the other thing we can do is um, cha -cha -cha. we are going to call check 
from our APIs whenever you want to know if a user comes from an action in a resource. This can be called from an API or from an API gateway or any mob, any from a Rigo policy. At some moment in your stack of executing an API, you need to call this, this API to know if the user comes from an action on a resource. So, Pauline, do you think this is going to help you? Yes, actually, uh, as you can see, uh, as you, yeah. <laughs> uh, the model is pretty uh, clear. We have a clear authorization uh, rules, like the, the one I wanted. Mm -hmm. And when I need to ask a question, I ask the question, is a user an uh, authorized to approve payment mm -hmm. on Entity ACME? And I don't know if she's administrator or mm -hmm. what, because it has been initialized before. Perfect. So, yeah, it's, it's perfect. And just to... Uh, just to uh, a little more context of how this works, right? You get a request from your application. In your API, you're going to call OpenFGA, saying if the user comes from an action on an object, you're going to go yes or no, and you're going to return that to your application, right? So the and API actually, is the place where you yeah. do the enforcement the enforcement there. And it's uh, centralized. Like. Yeah, it's just, yeah, you have a cent OpenFGA is going to write this in a centralized database. It can be Postgres or MySQL, and uh, that the data is there. OK, so now um, I have uh, entity administrators that can approve payments. And uh, now I want to say, like, um, the owner of the payment, the one who created it, actually, I want his manager to be able to approve payments. Like in a Spain solution, you make payment with a, a card, for example, so you are the owner, but only your manager can approve it. Can we do that with your model? OK. Let's see how that we can do and see if Visual Studio Code doesn't crash again. And uh, so in, in, for what you explained, uh, Pauline, what we want to do is something like this. So we're going to, this is what we had before, right, this entity and this user. But now we want to introduce a new type that is a payment that is going to have, and an, it's going to belong to a specific entity, Acme or whatever other customer you have, and it's be owned by a user, right? And then we can, we wanna want, want to define permissions based on this. However, this, try, this time we're going to try something different. In uh, Agicap, they built a BDD tool that lets product managers specify how the system should behave from an uh, uh, authorization perspective. So the thing here that says users, managers, and administrators can approve payments. Omer is a member of the entity Acme, is managed by Marie, and is the owner of the payment cube con EU, right? And then we say, OK, we've given the, uh, Anne is an administrator, Omar is a member, and Marie is a manager of o Omar. And uh, the entity ends such a turn. Yeah, so Omar should be, uh, sorry, and given that this payment is part of the ACME entity and Omar is the owner of the payment, Omar shouldn't be able to approve it because he submitted the payment, he cannot approve. Marie should be able to approve uh, because she's the manager of Omar, and Anne should approve because she's the admin, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first store this, uh, this new model in FGA. So I'm gonna write the model, okay? So, and the, sorry, I did the wrong thing. What this is this one? one? Yes, yeah, sorry, this one. I'm gonna write the model, and that works fine. And now we're gonna run this tool that Agicap created, it's called FGA BDD, and send uh, that definition that we, uh, we just saw. And you see here, it's telling me that the relationship payment can approve doesn't exist. Okay, so let's go and add that. So we're gonna define here, define can approve. And then I'm gonna say, I, I, I can look at the test and figure out what should I do here, but let's, I'm gonna just do something more intuitive, which is if you can approve payments from the entity, you can approve payment, okay? So I'm gonna write this model again, and now I'm gonna run the tests. Now it's telling me that there's a manager relationship that doesn't exist, okay? So we need to define now that user can have a manager, which is a user, perfect. I'm gonna now write the model and try to do this again. Now it's better, but it's telling me that Marie should be, should be able to approve the expense report, but it, she's not. And that's because Marie is, is Omar's manager, but we haven't defined that here. So we can say that you can approve payments, if you can approve payments from the entity, or if you are a manager from owner, okay? Now, now we write the model, and we try this again and now it's succeeded. 
Okay, so the idea here, if you see, is that we can start defining these additional resources for everything you have in your application, and when you're defining permissions, you can start walking up the hierarchy of relationships to know, to define if a specific uh, user can perform an action on a specific resource. Make sense? And it's perfect because uh, my project manager, not Andres that I'm letting him doing all the code, <laughs> but uh, my project manager can write a test with me and uh, she can actually read the model. Like the model is, is readable from a product perspective because it's really clear like who can approve payments, mm -hmm. like the ones that can approve it from entity or the manager of the owner. It's really, it's like uh, uh, mm -hmm. English for mm -hmm. it, so it's perfect. No, this is what I see. Okay. So now, um, like I said before, we wanted uh, staff to, to be able to help our customers, so to see the payment. But uh, what we did at first is it's, uh, letting staff see the payment for, every, for uh, an unlimited amount of time. And now I want to be able to say, OK, so the staff can only uh, see uh, my customers' uh, data for a limited uh, amount of time, uh, only when they are in the phone with the customer. So I don't want to, to be, uh, to, I don't want it to be like uh, open for everyone to see because it's still sensitive data. Mm -hmm. So can we do that with uh, OpenFG? Yeah, so that's an interesting scenario, right? In most of our applications, we have some kind of super admin role or something like that that can perform actions that they shouldn't be able to perform all the time, right? Only in very specific situations, right? So let's see how we can, how we can model that with, with OpenFGA. So we have a third model here. This is the one we, we previously had. But now when I'm assigning the staff relationship, I'm saying like staff equals user with time constraint. And then I define a function here that is called time constraint. It can be whatever function. This is a function I just created. It receives current time, grand time, and grand duration. And then it succeeds if the current time is less than grand time plus grand duration. Now, when I write the tuple, in this case, I'm saying like a search is a staff, uh, is a staff of the entity at me. I'm specifying a condition while Search is the stuff of, the, of, that, of that entity, right? And then we're saying we have time constraint starting today at midnight for one hour, right? And then when we are checking for a specific permission, the way we're going to do it is we're going to call is user search related to object payment uh, at, at this moment, like, a, and this is going to be true or false depending on the moment. In this case, this is tomorrow, so it should return false. In, the, in this case, this is today, 10 minutes after midnight, it should return true. Right? So now if I, let's see if I do this right, all right. If I uh, go to the CLI again and run this test, FGA model test. Did you, did you update the model before? Uh, no, in this case, I don't need to. Okay. Uh, just let me see if I can make this bigger, if I can. Okay, I'm not being lucky with this. Uh, tests and uh, step. Yeah, yeah, model. So when I do this, model test, model. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of executing this YAML file with the model, the tuples, and the tests, and it's telling me that all, all are passing. If I change this and I say I suspect this to be true, for example, and I run it again. One is going to fail, and I cannot see it because I cannot increase this. Okay. Yeah, so this one is the one that failed. Okay? So the idea is that I can enrich the model with these conditions, and based on that, define permissions only for a limited, limited amount of time. I can use the same conditions for other things, like based on an IP range or whatever value you want to compare. You can define a function that takes that value into account. So. Perfect. <laughs> So how did, did uh, OpenFGI help uh, FGCAP? So first, it's centralized, so we, it's centralized, sorry. So we don't need to like replicate uh, the authorization logic everywhere. Uh, so we don't have like uh, uh, hundreds of occurrences of uh, is admin or staff and, uh, and uh, every microservices redefining these functions. So now we just call uh, an API and we ask our business question. Mm -hmm. It's fine grain, like you saw. I can, I can really uh, go fine grain with saying, okay, the owner, the manager's owner can approve payment, but not staff, et cetera, et cetera. 
it's readable, like uh, my, my own product manager uh, and every product manager at Agicap, they can read the model and understand it uh, very quickly. And it respects your business uh, logic. So we are a fan of uh, domain-driven design at uh, Agicap, so I don't know if you practice uh, DDD here, but uh, yeah, it's, it's like... Uh, it, it follows uh, the DDD principle, like uh, making your, your authorization um, close to the business. Mm -hmm. Great. So, and something that I've seen, this thing of, like, uh, when you're starting a new project in a new company, authorization is the last thing you want to think about, right? You're very focused in trying to solve the problem you want to solve, right? So, this thing of starting with is admin or no authorization is, is very common, right? Uh, I joined Okta as part of the, uh, an acquisition of another company called Odd Zero. Odd Zero had a I joined Odd Zero like six years ago. It was five years old, the company. The managed dashboard of Odd Zero didn't have rules. You would have, everyone could do everything, right? And that is kind of an authorization company, five years old, right? So I don't, it's very common that this happens when you're in the startup trying to get product market fit. You don't care about authorization. You could care later. You can integrate it with something like OpenFGA. And uh, so OpenFGA is currently in the sandbox stage. We just proposed to incubation like uh, four days ago. And uh, so um, it's number eight in the list of projects based on the number of commits in the, in the CNCF set of projects, which is surprising, but awesome. And uh, so if you want, please join OpenFGA. So we have a very welcoming community that a lot of people from other companies are helping us to move this forward. And, uh, and, and I know like, if you, you can join us, or you can also join Agicap that I know they are hiring. So if you want to work on OpenFGA on the other side, you can also work with them. And uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. you we are going to have a, a kiosk in the Project Pavilion. And please send session feedback here. Uh, we, we have time for we a question. We have three minutes. So someone has a question. Yeah. Oh. Maybe you can, if you want to go to the microphone. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, we're, we're trying to put this in production, but we're facing some issues. Because maybe there is no, I didn't see any like, white paper or best practices. How to do this, for example, uh, how applications can know the model ID, which is calculated at runtime. Anytime, anything, anybody, in any deployment, in any environment, mm -hmm. which is this, the model ID will be different. Another application needs to know this model ID. Yeah. So how to deal with this, um, at least I cannot find information on how the okay, good yeah. way to do that. When reinventing the wheel all the time. So awesome. So he's a very experienced OpenFGA developer and is asking a question. And so thank you for the question. What happens with OpenFGA is that each time you write a model, you might have seen that I wrote a model and it says something model ID and just show me a model. It's like you, you're always updating a model. You're never overriding it. So when you're using an application, you want to target to that model ID as part of the HAPI you call to make sure that your application, it works with that specific model. So if someone changes the model later, you can change in the applications later, right? But it's not that your application is going to break. The process there is after you build the model, you need to put that in a vault or something that the rest of applications can share, right? So it's kind of a shared secret. You treat it as such. And when the application is deployed, you get a new model, and you get a new secret that the rest of the application can access, right? We can go into more details there, but it's something like that, right? One more question. I think Pauline is there, so yeah. It, it was more just a question about uh, the examples you showed. Is there a place we can find those examples that you showed today? If there, sorry, what? The examples that you showed on the presentation. Can we find any? Uh, yes, so we have a, an, an, in the OpenFGA repository, there's a, a samples store. Uh, in the OpenFGA organization in GitHub, there's a samples store project, right, that has a lot of examples there. Not exactly this one, but very similar. Okay. Hi, nice presentation. Um, I have a question. Do you have any, so you, you mentioned that policies and data are stored cent centrally. Do you have any model where you can push that more locally for, or how do you deal with things like latency, for example? Yeah, so you can, so right now the storage are Postgres and, and MySQL. We have people that are developing one for SQLite, so you can deploy it more locally. In general, the thing is that when you're making authorization decision today, you generally are looking to a lot of, reading a lot of databases to make the decision, right? So you are trading off that latency, 
by you're not making those anymore and you're calling OpenFGA, right? So first I will check, try to check if you really need that complexity of having the data spread in multiple places to have checks more locally. If you do, you can, right? But the, the philosophy of a product like OpenFGA is that you call the service because everything is going to be like a more consistent and easier to manage if you can do that, right? The system is designed to have pretty low latency, right? Okay, so I think that's it, but uh, I'll be out there if someone wants to follow up with another question, right? Thank you very much. Thank you.